What's up guys, Main Man Sui here, hoping you're all doing awesome as always. I thought this could be a super fun video. I wanted to talk about the balance direction of a game, like what I personally would do with the characters. I rest on, let's just make a uh, top 10 characters I think deserve nerfing in Tekken 8, and it's basically gonna be looking at the top 10, and what you can do with them, and why they are so problematic. And this is really what I hope happens with Season 2 of Tekken 8. I do believe the best days of Tekken 8 are ahead of us. Uh, season 2 of Tekken 7 did a lot to fix vanilla Tekken 7 and I hope that Season 2 does the same for Tekken 8. I think the number one character that needs adjustment is Nina. I think she is the best character now. For a while I thought it was Yoshi, but it's basically like, I think, Nina, Yoshi, Dragunov. If someone says they think Yoshi is stronger, I mean, I would listen to that argument. It's just that Nina is so unbelievably all-round. She does everything. Yoshi doesn't do everything, but what Yoshi does well, he does, you know, no one can do what he does. But the thing with Nina is that it's just all over the place. You have the best poke strings. Literally. The best poke strings. Um, a million things we could could get into, to, into, like the best poking. And then you have move like, moves like Core Circle 4-2. Uh, back to two. You probably don't even know about this string, but if you ever try to move against her, this is 12 frame startup homing. 12 frame startup, but of course it's only minus six on block. And very twitch confirmable. Counter it string. You notice counter it. You add that and it's 50 fucking damage from a 12 frame homing. Then she has a super strong throw game, like I do a two break. You're the, these characters, you know, like Dragonov and Nina, uh, they just, you're not allowed to have recoverable health. It's gone. Um, it's gone. And this is from a safe mid. And of course, do you know this chain throw? It's gone. Stuff like that is really obnoxious because I feel like it's such an important system mechanic in Tekken 8 that when you combo me, I have recoverable health. But then you have certain characters who can super easy remove that recoverable health and a lot of characters can't do that this doesn't seem balanced or super thought through to me and then you can get into you know 50 mile mid counter hit launcher that's safe on block what minus five on block right uh, this being a launcher that's evasive by the way safe mid something like that etc she has a 50 50 uh, we, we can get into everything, but she does everything too well, and she has her poking is the best by far. I also do not like baking too many awesome properties into one attack. Uh, this being a long range mid heat engager. Power crush. I don't like power crush and heat engager in the same move. Because then it leads to situations when that character is in heat and you have a power crush that's suddenly plus five on block. I'm like, should that really be in the game, you know? And then the next character obviously goes without saying, it's gonna be Yoshi Boy, everyone's favorite cybernetic samurai. Him, it's a little bit easier in my opinion. I think you fix almost every problem with this character by just nerfing his damage output. We do have to nerf this. This Kim Tech Trap has to go, it's super busted. So remove Kin Tech Trap and then nerf his damage pretty significantly. And this wall combo needs toning down. I think if you just tone down his damage, you fix a lot of the issues with the character. I've said it in a million videos, but Yoshi and Xiaoyu were not designed to have high damage. So I think a, a lot of the problems with this character are fixed if you do that. As someone says in the chat, you could look at wall carry, you could also look at 1-1. One, one. One one might have too many properties going for it. It might be a little bit too good. So looking at one one would also be smart. But I think just toning down damage would do a heck of a lot for Yoshi. And the next character we're gonna look at is Mr. Dragonov, who's top Get three, who just battle. recently had uh, down two nerfed. Three less damage, back for free. Second kick doesn't track like crazy now. It's not homing. And uh, Sneak 4 doesn't wall splat. Nice. I still feel he is uh, too too dumb to play against. I think Sneak 4 needs additional nerfing. 
I don't know if heat engagers, to be honest, need to be plus 7 on block and also hit fucking grounded. Like, one of those has to go. Either it doesn't hit grounded or it's not plus fucking 7. This is also a goddamn launcher when he's in heat. And it tracks way too much. If I don't do a perfect sidestep, this shit hits me. Why is this in the game? If he wants to, he can keep his hatchet, although I feel like you could honestly give it less range. You could actually hit the range on this again. He should have to stand like this, like Lydia, for that to work. Because that's the whole point of a character, he wants to work himself into this range. That would be my feedback on a character, like, please fix that, and he wouldn't be completely insufferable to play against. And the next character we're gonna look at is the protagonist, the hero, the character we all love so much. It's Jin Kazama. I always root for Jin because he's a mama's boy. I'm immediately going to mention Scourge. This move has too many attributes going for it. It's probably, the, I mean, one of the best lows I've ever seen. This move should be minus 15. It should be launch punishable. Or, version 2, it stays minus 14, but it doesn't counter hit launch. Instead, it flops them like this, and I can do another Scourge, or I can do a CD1, and... It's still a great low. That's the funny thing, it would still be a great low. Second thing is the win button. This one should fall in line... Not ex Heihachi's has nowhere close to this reach and nowhere close to that tracking. But this should be more similar to Heihachi's, and Heihachi's, in my opinion, represents a fair heat smash. Heat smashes are so strong. They do so much damage. And his wall splats, you know, from Venezuela to South Africa, just across the ocean, <laughs> right? We, we all know this. There's so much damage when this connects. But then, you know, the insulting part is that on block, it's so advantageous. You've seen this at the wall. Do this. Plus 21 into chip. It's just like, what, what, what are we doing here? And it has so much range. It's got decent tracking. So can we please make this a little bit more like Heihachi's? Less range? And I'm talking many inches, big old inches, and uh, less tracking. Thank you. It's just being reasonable, to be honest. It's too good on hit, it's too good on block. Also, I think that giving 214 a counter hit property was always a mistake. This string is way too good, it's way too abusable, it's way too perfect to counter hit wall splat. Or in the open. Are you kidding me? Knocked down into a Scourge into Oki? There's a lot of things we could mention, but Demon Paw should have less tracking. Demon Paw is way too strong of a neutral button. Way too strong of a neutral button. This would be my little slap on the wrist for Jin for early season 2. And then take it from there. But th these are like, in my opinion, must, must fixes. Next character we're gonna look at is Get Big Ol' Kang. Battle. Muscle armor, if you commit to it, should not be safe. I think this should be less spammable. And should be more skill incentivized. Like, I, I shouldn't be able to have you block this and still be safe. That should be minus 10 in my opinion. Down for 2-1 uh, should not be as easily Twitch confirmable as it is. I know we buffed this in Tekken 7 to make this happen. Uh, into Bagoosh, right? Into Bagoosh. But I think this needs nerfing. It This move is overpowered in Tekken 8. You shouldn't have all of this time to visually confirm. I pressed into it. <laughs> Off with his head. This could be made minus 14. Although it is very steppable. But they could make this minus 14. I do not believe in making this minus 15. That's too much. One thing more I would want to do with King. You, you know what I said about Heat Smash? This should not track. He should have to mix with this. He should have to mix with this. This should not track. And then another thing I don't like is that we all play this game online and suddenly a Jaguar Sprint mix-up with a 23-frame RKO becomes unreactable. 
But this is where you got you get into uh, PvP online video game ethics. Is it warranted making this 24 to make it more reactable online? But at the same time, that makes it suddenly much worse in offline gameplay. I don't know. I don't have a good answer. I just find that mix up to be toxic online with lag. It turns into a true 50-50. And then we have a queen, Alyssa. She has so much fucking bullshit. The most agrarian stuff is everything she does in uh, Chainsaw Stance. Chainsaw Stance is way too perfect. Uh, she has way too many amazing save buttons in this. The chip is way too much. It's just, it's too dumb. There's not, not enough counterplay. Why does she have a super good homing low here? Why, why, why can't I step this? Not this, why is this homing? Minus three on block. Why can she lock me down, my spacing? Why can she do that, considering I'm not allowed to block this shit either? Chainsaw stands that they've been buffing ever since Tekken 7 with every season, and now in Tekken 8, they did too much. They, they did too much to that stance. Next character we're gonna look at is Law. We have a lot of characters in this game. I have like 10 frames like this. Yay, I got my heat engager. But then when we are in heat and we do that again, the character is knocked down. It's a slump and you get a guaranteed follow-up. Like, ah! But Law, for some reason, is allowed a 10-frame confirmable launcher. Yeah, it's not a slump. It's a full-on fucking launcher. I'm not sure I want this in the game, considering it's not very difficult to even confirm. You can just fart out a 1-1, and if you see them press into it, you, you add the last bit. Just add that, and then boom. And they're dead, and I'm not sure that should be in the game. Also, his nunchuck should not track as much as it does. It's already uh, a steel pedal, right? Which is very hard to punish due to its range. When he's in heat, it's a steel pedal normal hit launcher. Outside of heat, it needs a counter to launch. But why does it track? This character has the most insufferable frames in the game. Like, and mix-ups. Hop, 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 plus a million, plus, 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 plus. Like, it's very hard to take your turn, but then the fact that he uses this, you can't even sidestep. He throws this shit. I feel like Law too much gets away playing this game without using uh, homing moves. He can use that and slide tracks like a motherfucker into a nunchuck. I find that stuff to be pretty absurd. So I would love to see Law nerfed a bit. And then we're gonna discuss Claudio. My biggest issue with Claudio is that when he launches you and takes you to the wall, and then you gotta wake up in this situation, right? And now it's arguably the most awful situation in the game. He does back one, and you die. You die, or he can mix that with a low heat smash that does 45 and also breaks the wall, if there's a wall. This character should not have this heat smash. And this heat smash cannot be minus 14. Claudio's mids are way too fucking strong. Like, th this DP is, is a joke. It's a joke to me. So... You see, I'm doing it here without any stack of star dust or star splur. Star spl no star splooge, no blue hand, and I'm minus 12, right? And on hit, it knocks down. If I counter it, we're at Law's nunchuck again, right? And suddenly it does this, right? It launches on counter it, and it's super evasive. He goes down very deep in Bolognese, deep in the pasta. But just like Law's nunchuck, if I'm in heat, this move completely changes. Minus two on block, normal hit launcher, super evasive. It also, like the nunchuck, steel pedal effect. I mean, if someone said I think this is the best move in the game, I'd be like... Mah. Mah. I mean, as a panic button, I can't think of much better, to be honest. 
but it's insufferable getting mixed, especially at the wall, by this, back one, hit confirmable down for 3-1, and then, to add insult to injury, he does this, and if you have a breakable wall behind you, what am I supposed to do? Back one is homing long range mid wall splat, minus 5 on block. And then you don't dare do anything, because he can fucking power crush immediately, or... I don't know, I'm just like, should this character that has these tools, should he really have this heat smash? And if, let's say, he gets to keep this heat smash, should it really be minus 14, or should we maybe make it minus 15? Just like Lee's was. I think that might be called for. And then the next character we're gonna look at is Mr. Shaheen. And then, I'm, then we've done 10 characters, and then I'm gonna do some honorable mentions. So Shaheen is uh, super underrated, but make no mistake, he is, is insanely strong. Uh, but he's also very basic. Uh, Arslan actually just tweeted, like, uh, an interesting tweet where he said that well, after Bandai Namco, Tekken Studio have nerfed uh, Jin, Nina, Yoshi, Dragonov. Once they've nerfed those four, Brian is gonna be the next big thing. He thinks everyone's gonna play Brian once those four are nerfed. I immediately thought, no, we're gonna play Shaheen. Or we're going to play Alyssa, or we're gonna play Claudio. What tournament players want is not a character who is very strong with super high execution. They want someone very strong, but also super basic. With down for two, with a hop kick, with an easy to understand mix up, but especially with strong small Tekken. They absolutely want the strong poking. And then they want the shenanigans. Like this. This guy needs nerfing. Now, I'm not of um, in the situation where I, I know how he should be nerfed, because I don't care too much about this character either. As some people mentioned in my chat, 4-2-3 is sort of a perfect move. For a tw I mean, th this 12 frame range. And then here you can, s oh, you can set up this uh, charge up, his uh, quote unquote flash kick. Which of course is completely absurd on hit. It's completely absurd on block. It's plus 14 in heat. Then he does this guarantee that removes your recoverable health. He also mixes that, you know, he has an orbital, which is a safe mid launcher. He can mix it with slide into guaranteed follow-up. It's a pretty disgusting mix-up. Allowing these characters yet again, these S tiers, very easy ways of getting rid of recoverable health. It just seems a little bit unfair. Like I combo you, ah, ah! and when I do a safe 15 frame mid, minus 9 on block, and you duck, and this hits, your comeback ability is flushed down the goddamn toilet. And then we're gonna do a super quick honorable mentions. Fangwei is obviously an honorable mention. Much tougher character to play than people think. But you could still tone him down a little bit. The move I would want to see toned down is back three. I just don't see the point of a fast long range knockdown mid that does... I mean, what, 50 damage on counter hit? Why that should be plus 6? That seems ridiculous to me. So that, that's one move where I would be like... Uh, it'd be nice to see that top down. Victor... Victor is very close to being a fine character. Um, but the biggest problem with Victor is... This. Into stance. So we'll do this in heat. Like here, here, it's just unavoidable. He just does this wall combo, and you, you have to take this. It's super OP. There's just no counterplay. You can't power crush. Yeah, but the problem with power crushing uh, against this move is that you're going to take a million damage. A million damage. I've tried it, and it's, it's just not in your favor. Yeah. And then we have Kuma. First off... That should not be guaranteed. The ass should not be guaranteed there. That's number one. Number two, too much chip damage in, in heat. 
too much chip. This has no counterplay. Like, ele elect bear electric has no counterplay. There should be counterplay to this. He can just mindlessly loop this into this. And you ju you're just standing there blocking. Can't really do anything. Uh, which shall you... I personally am not a fan of this wall combo. This one. I would like to see that go. I, it's like Yoshi. She shouldn't be a high damage character in my opinion. And then I would take a sledgehammer to hypnotist. Either higher heat consumption or this sweep is way more punishable. Uh, and also... Why does her back turn heat smash give plus it 51 damage into plus 20? Should I really take that much damage and then have to guess in the best 50-50 in the game? That doesn't make sense to me at all. That's that's way too over to uh, And the last character I want to talk about is Brian. Brian, I think, quarter circle back one has no business being plus five. It's too easy pressuring someone like this. Just linking these, checking. It could be plus three, but you could also, t it would still be a great move if, if it was plus two. It would still be great. You would even see this thrown out at like plus one, even neutral. I think plus five is just uh, overdoing it. And then Requiem should have zero tracking, absolutely zero tracking to someone stepping right. The way it is right now is that you can step it right, but you need to do it with very strong timing. So it should be more easily steppable, Requiem. And then uh, I, I'm gonna mention Incinerator, this string. If I stop at the third hit, I'm minus two. If I stop at the fourth hit, I'm minus three. All of this is natural. The last hit, if I add it, is minus 10, but due to the pushback, you need a wall to punish this. You can also power crush through it and, and you can step it right, but this is very hard to do, but you can do it. But the big problem with the string is that even though it has all of these properties, it tracks like crazy. Every single hit realigns with the opponent when they sidewalk. And I think that's bullshit. If I do this, and you're called out, you should be able to sidewalk Brian and punish him. This thing has too much going for it, especially in heat, you see the chip as well. Has too much going for it. Uh, so that's what I would do to Brian. That's my list. Those are the characters, in my opinion, in the biggest need of nerfing. Uh, hope you thought it was interesting. I did this pretty... Uh, shoot from the hip improvised so of course we're gonna take longer time the balancing team to think of how to nerf these characters but i still think there were some solid uh, ideas here so i hope you found it interesting and i hope you have a great day take care